As I set out to build my video editing rig, I found a ton of videos out there to help gamers pick their PC parts, but close to none explain the process to pick the right parts for a suitable 4K video editing computer. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to pick the right parts for a $1,500 budget build. Let's get rocking. Now, before you jump all over me and say, Ben, that's not a budget, please know that I do not mean cheap when I say budget. A budget is an amount of money allocated to a project. So our goal is to not go over $1,500 budget. If you do not have that size budget, don't worry. I'm going to explain the logic behind what I selected in the parts that I've selected, and then you can apply that same logic to building your PC at whatever budget you have allocated for your build. But to save you a little time, I've actually detailed out three separate parts lists in the links below. I've created a $750 budget, a $1,000 budget, and of course our $1,500 budget that we're picking the parts for right now. And I've done that for both Intel and Ryzen. So you can go ahead and check those links out in the description below. And as always, if you do make a purchase of those links, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you guys. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Also, if any of the parts are out of stock in those lists, please comment below this video so I can update those parts lists for you so that way they can always be ready to go. This video is a part of a larger series. Check out the full playlist in the YouTube cards above. I'm going to take you through the entire in-depth process that will give you everything you need to build your very own video editing PC. How to pick your parts, how to prepare for the build, building the computer, and how to get it up and running. If you want to follow along with me, you can go ahead and click the links in the description below to check out exact component prices of each of these components. And if you want to skip ahead to certain parts of this video, then there are timestamps in the description below as well. Okay, now I want to answer the most common question when going to buy a new laptop or build your own PC, and that's, should I buy my PC parts now or wait till the next release? I see this a lot when people are getting ready to purchase, and it has been one of the biggest struggles of my own as I've been going to build my PC. So before we dive in, let's talk about it. Depending on when you're watching this video, you could see an increase or decrease in the prices for computer parts. Perhaps you're hopeful that Intel or Ryzen will launch their next generation of CPUs. Or maybe you're hopeful that Nvidia will finally come out with that more powerful GPU that is at a not absorbently crazy price point. These are all great things to wait for, but the most important thing to ask yourself is this question. Is now the right time for you to buy and build your PC? For me, yes, it is. My Dell XPS is about four years old, and as I put it through more and more workload, I find that it's slowing down and bottlenecking. A video that should take 15 minutes to edit is taking me anywhere from 30 to 45. I run this channel part-time, meaning that every minute counts. So for me, now is the perfect time to build my PC. Could I have gotten some better deals six months ago or six months in the future? Perhaps. But to me, the time has become money. So it is the time to pull the trigger and build a new PC. All right, first up, the CPU or the processor. The CPU is the first part you should select, and in my opinion, this should be the most expensive component you purchase, accounting for roughly 30% of your budget. This is contrary to building a gaming PC. Most gaming PC builders would recommend allocating that most expensive spot for the GPU, but when it comes to video editing, the CPU has a more critical role, followed by the GPU, and we'll discuss more on that later. The CPU you choose will determine the motherboard of your PC. Intel and AMD each have their own socket type. They are not cross compatible. AMD Ryzen is AM4 and will get you from first to third generation and maybe fourth depending on the motherboard that you purchase. Intel is LGA1151 for sixth to ninth generation and LGA 1200 for the now 10th generation. And if we're, you know, you watch this video and you have 11th generation, then make sure you check the compatibility. 
If you decide halfway through picking your parts that you want to switch from AMD to Intel, then make sure you swap out the AM4 motherboard in your cart for an LGA1151 or 1200. Okay, so Intel versus AMD Ryzen. Let's talk quickly about the pros of each one. The AMD pros are it is very cost effective, Better multitasking since on the average they come with more cores than their Intel priced counterparts. And it comes with a better stock air cooler. So if you want to save around $100, the Ryzen 3900X that I have here actually comes with a stock air cooler. Uh, but I've opted to go with the Dark Rock Pro 4. And we'll talk more about air coolers as we move through this video. So you can actually save around $100 going with AMD if you don't want to buy an air cooler versus this Intel 9700K, which did not come with a stock air cooler. The pros on Intel are reputation and reliability longest in the industry. So they have a lot more stability in their component. So a lot of times you'll see BIOS updates on motherboards saying, you know, reliability update, reliability update, reliability update, which is great. They're improving their reliability. But when you think about it, why are they always pushing reliability updates where you won't see that as much as Intel because they've been in the industry longer and they've developed a much more reputable and reliable part. That's not to say that these aren't reliable. That's not to say that these aren't becoming more reliable every single day. We just have more history here with Intel. Slightly better in single core performance in certain programs, but this is becoming less and less the case as Ryzen continues to develop their single core performance. But right now I still see Intel having slightly better single core performance and you'll see that in a lot of benchmarks. For this build with our $1,500 budget, I'm going to go with the Ryzen 9 3900X. So if you want to save a little bit of money, you can choose the Ryzen 3700X. And if you need to save a little bit more money, uh, you have a little uh, smaller budget, I would recommend the Ryzen 5 3600. That will give you a lot more breathing room in your budget and still give you great performance. All right, next up is the motherboard to take advantage of all that the 3900X has to offer, we're going to opt for an X570 motherboard from Asus. Now, if you're going with Intel, the CPU like the i7-9700K I have here, then you'll wanna go for the Z390 motherboard, and it's the LGA1151. And if you wanna go for, say, Intel's latest 10th gen i7 10700K, then I would recommend getting the Z490, which is an LGA1200 motherboard. If you need help verifying the motherboard and CPU compatibility, you can check the socket type of the CPU in the description of the product listing, and then verify it with the motherboard socket type and that product description listing. So how are we pricing our motherboard? Well, for the high-end CPU, we want the motherboard to be around three-fourths to a little more than half of the price of the CPU to stay on par with our budget. Asus sent me the Strix X570 eGaming motherboard, which is on the upper end of motherboard budgets and is packed with the specs that I need to get the most out of my 3900X. But if that pushes you out of your price range, the Asus Tough X570 motherboard is a really great buy. It's a lower price tag and it still has great features. You can even get them with Wi-Fi integrated. So keep an eye out for that motherboard as well. Like I said, I'm going to link more products and descriptions and I'd love to answer any questions you have about the parts you're thinking of picking. So definitely comment below. All right, the next part we are going to be looking at is the GPU. The GPU is the third component that we are going to pick for our build. The GPU is responsible for providing smooth playback in the timeline, rendering, motion design files and video files, and encoding slash exporting in programs such as Premiere Pro, After Effects, DaVinci Resolve, Autodesk 3ds Max, Maya, and 4D Cinema, and a few more. Our budget for the GPU is going to be roughly the same as it was for the motherboard. If you want to get better performance, then I would spend a little bit more on the GPU than the motherboard. Asus matched the Strix motherboard they sent over with a GTX 1660 Super, which I consider a fantastic mid-range GPU. With 6 gigs of VRAM and 1408 CUDA cores, it is a fine balance for 4K video editing. I definitely recommend the GTX 1660 Super or the TI version for an extra 100 CUDA cores. Personally, for 4K video editing rig, I would not go below this GPU. 
If you have to save some money, I would save money and go with a more affordable motherboard. Now, if you have a little bit of money to spare, you could upgrade to the RTX 2060. It is a good buy and gathering an extra 500 CUDA cores above the 1660 Super. This will improve your rendering times and encoding speed when video editing. All right, number four on the list is RAM. When choosing memory for your rig, you wanna make sure you have enough to capture the full benefits of the multitasking performance of the CPU. If you have a killer multitasking CPU, like the Ryzen 3900X, but you only have eight gigs of RAM in your build, then you will most likely see a bottleneck in performance. With that in mind, I would recommend a minimum of 16 gigs of RAM. And we have Corsair's Dominator Platinum RGB here, which is a little more expensive at 3,200 megahertz, but you can get a solid RAM kit for around 75 to $90 in the 16 gig range. However, with the $1,500 budget in mind, we have room to pick up 32 gigs of RAM, which is my recommendation for a solid 4K video editing build. Kingston sent over two sticks of DDR4 16 gig HyperX Fury RGB, at 2400 megahertz. Now, a lot of you may wonder why only 2400 megahertz? Well, simply put, for video editing alone, you are not going to see a big enough benefit from spending more money on higher RAM speeds. So I would save the money for getting a better processor, or if you thought about getting 16 gigs of RAM at 3200 megahertz, or 32 gigs of RAM at 2400 megahertz, and they're pretty close in price, then I would ditch the higher speeds and go for more gigs. Okay, let's talk about storage, and my goodness, has it gotten small. I remember the days I put my first hard disk drive uh, in my computer, and it was absolutely massive comparatively to this tiny 500 gig Kingston drive. So the guys over at Kingston also provided the perfect storage setup for us. I'm going to load my operating system, uh, plus all of the programs and apps I will be running onto a 500 gig M.2 NVMe SSD. This is a 500 gig Kingston KC2500. And next I'm going to add a one terabyte M.2 SSD to store all of the project files I'm editing and the projects I'm going to be working on. And this will allow the M.2 drive to have optimal performance without getting bogged down by all of the project files. The last thing I would recommend is adding an internal storage drive to offload the projects you are not currently working on. I do this by using external storage devices, but you can easily add a hard disk drive of two to four terabytes inside of your PC to pull all of the files off of the hard drive that you're editing on onto a different one so it doesn't get bogged down and slow down as the drive reaches maximum capacity. Plus, it is always good to back up your projects on another drive for safekeeping. There's some people who also add a third drive for all their cache files, and we can talk more about that in a future video if you're interested. All right, now on to the cooler. Air cooler versus AIO. Okay, there's a lot of debates on which is better for cooling your CPU. Should you buy an AIO or should you buy an air cooler? And here is the basic gist for a beginner. AIOs are really sleek and depending on the model can do a slightly better job for cooling your CPU. However, for less money and ease of maintenance, you can get a really great air cooler. In this build, I will be using an air cooler, but if you are curious about using an AIO, I will be installing that on another build I have coming on the channel in the future. If you're watching this video after I filmed that build, then you'll be able to check it out in the YouTube cards above. Be Quiet hooked us up with the Dark Rock Pro 4 for this build. This is their top tier air cooler and has better cooling than most AIOs, plus it costs about $60 to $80 less than most AIOs. AIOs definitely look really great in a build, but air coolers are the best price to performance options. The only thing you need to make sure of is to double check the clearance that your air cooler provides for your RAM, especially if you are getting a cooler as large as the Dark Rock Pro 4. You can easily check this under the product specs online. In my next build, I'm going to be using the NZXT Kranken X53. So if you're interested in building a PC with an AIO, you can follow along in that video series. All right, next on our list is the power supply. And I'm gonna move a few things around here, get the power supply front and center. This is easily the most overlooked but very important piece of your build. The power supply is what will be in charge of providing consistent 
power to all the components in your build. If your power supply glitches or goes out, it could ruin one or all of your components. So don't cheap out on the power supply. I would recommend getting at least a 550 watt gold power supply from a reputable brand. For the $1,500 build we are putting together, I would recommend anywhere from a 550 watt to an 850 watt power supply. This will ensure you have enough power to push to all of your components and it will future proof your system for any upgrades you might make. One thing you can do is put together your build on PC Parts Picker and it will tell you an estimated amount of watts that your system will consume. I recommend doubling that number for your power supply purchase. For instance, the build we're putting together right now has an estimated power consumption of around 338 watts. So I will make sure to get at least a 650 watt power supply or higher for my build. Be Quiet sent over their Straight Power 11 850 watt power supply. Be Quiet was the first brand I reached out to when deciding to put together the build. I really liked the quality of their components and I was stoked when they jumped on board to provide the power supply, the Dark Rock Pro, and the case for this build. And speaking of the case, let's check it out. I was going to bring this up here, but I really have nowhere to put it. So I'm just going to throw up some B-roll as we talk about the case. When it comes to selecting a case, my hot buttons are the size and airflow. There are a lot of really, really aesthetically pleasing cases out there, but they do not all have great airflow. Plus, I didn't personally want a really flashy build. I want some lighting to show off my build, but nothing outrageous. There are three cases that really stand out to me. The Fractal Design Mesh Fi C, the Be Quiet Pure Base 500DX, and the NZXT 510. These are mid-tower cases, meaning they will fit a standard ATX motherboard, but are slightly shorter in length and height. Be Quiet and NZXT ended up coming through again for me by providing cases as well. For the $1,500 build, I will be using the Be Quiet Pure Base DX500. It has excellent airflow, a glass side panel to see all of the beautiful components, and some discreet lighting accents. For the lower budget build, since the NZXT is a more budget friendly case, I'll be using the NZXT 510. It has solid airflow, is slightly smaller than the Pure Base, which is great if you have less room for your setup, and also has a large glass side panel. Okay, something I really wanted to mention was the keyboard. When it comes to keyboards, they're all pretty preferential. It's all about whether you like a long key travel or you know a short key travel or a mechanical keyboard or perhaps you're used to the short travel on a laptop. All that aside, I have recently started using a keyboard from Logic Keyboards. It is the Adobe Filmmaker Premiere Pro and After Effects keyboard, and it has drastically improved my workflow. Astra sent this keyboard over to me a few weeks ago, and I'm really, really digging it. So I wanted to mention this in the choosing your parts video in the series before you went ahead and bought some random keyboard that didn't boost your workflow or productivity uh, in any way. So definitely consider the Filmmaker keyboard from Logic Keyboards. Next up is the screen. And for video editing, I always want to make sure I have at least one color accurate screen. Acer produces a handful of color accurate screens at different performance and price levels. I really like the entry level model, which is the Concept D CM2 at 100% sRGB, 100% Adobe RGB, and 96% DCI-P3 color gamut range. It is really well priced at $400, opposed to some of the higher end desktop screens that can yield a thousand plus dollar price tags. If you're curious about my part recommendations for more budget-friendly builds, you can check out the links in the description below this video, where I feature a complete parts list of multiple build budgets. If you have any questions or comments about my components, uh, the selections that I've made, please comment below. I'm very active in my comment section, and I would love to talk with you there. If you're ready to start building with me, then go ahead and order those parts and then I'll see you in the next video where we will prep for our build. Definitely watch that video even if you haven't ordered your parts because there's a few things that you might wanna consider ordering alongside of your components to help with the ease of the build. Keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. I'm Benji Kaiser and I'll see you in the next build video.